Hello and welcome to Geordie Leather. This is part three of my mini sewing machine series where I'm going to go into a bit more detail about setting up your industrial sewing machine. In the previous part I showed you how to slow the speed of the machine right down to get it to a slow controllable speed that you really do need for leather work. Um, if you've missed that part I'll put a link to, to the video up here. So before we get into the detail can I just say thanks to everyone who has already entered the February 2021 giveaway competition. If you haven't done so, then please head over to georgieleather.com and check out the giveaways tab. Um, you need to be a subscriber to enter, so if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll be informed when I release a new video. So, you've bought an industrial machine. You've installed a speed reducer, so what's next? Well, there's several things you need to do before you can begin sewing. In this video, I'm going to talk about threads. I'll show the different types and sizes and how to thread the machine. I'll talk about needles. I'll show you the types and sizes you need to know and how to install it into the machine. I'll talk about bobbins. I'll show you how to wind a bobbin, how to install it and how to tension it. I'll talk a little bit about how the machine creates a stitch and then we'll run some material through the machine and look at the stitch in detail. Um, I'll show you some of the common problems that you'll come across and how to identify what's gone wrong. I'll show you how to adjust the tension on the machine so your stitches come out perfect. Okay, so let's get started by having a look at thread. Um, thread, as you can see, comes in a wide range of colours, thicknesses, materials. Too many for me to go into here, but I'll show you some of the more common ones that I use. First off, you can't use the same thread you use for hand stitching in your sewing machine. Um, let me show you. So this is some um, thread that you'd use for hand stitching. It's wax cotton thread, it's about a millimetre thick, it's just it's too thick. It's got a wax coating, so I wouldn't put this through your sewing machine, it probably would gunk it up and may even break your needle. So instead, we need to use a thread especially designed for using in a sewing machine. Now you could use the same thread you use in your domestic machines, but generally, if you're using a machine to stitch heavier fabrics like leather or canvas, you need a much tougher thread. I use bonded nylon thread, it's incredibly strong, and it can be sealed with heat so your thread ends can be locked off securely. I'll cover that in more detail in part four of the series. So threads are sold in different thicknesses or diameters. There are a multitude of sizes systems used in different parts of the world. You'll hear things like V size, ticket size, text size, metric size. So if you're new to all of this it can seem very confusing. Depending on where you are in the world, you'll have your own system, but don't worry. I've put together a free PDF, which you can download from the pattern section of georgieleather.com, which tries to simplify the different naming systems used for needles and threads. So please check that out if you need further help. Um, in the UK, we use the metric system, which is equivalent to the ticket size mentioned earlier. So, Threads are mostly sold in count values, for example, 30s, 40s, 60s, etc. In general, the lower count number, the thicker the thread. So a 30s thread is thicker than a 40s thread. Um, in addition to understanding the different thread thicknesses, it's useful to know the different ways you can buy it. Generally, for industrial machines, thread is sold in much larger amounts than you get for a domestic machine. Um, I'll show you some examples. Smaller spools, um, like this for example, this is called a bicone and it can hold up to about 5,000 meters of thread. Uh, larger spools like this, this is called a cone and this can hold up to about 25,000 meters of thread. Um, they're obviously both too big to fit on your machine, so they need to be sat on a spool holder, which is an external stand for industrial sewing machines. So often when you buy thread, it doesn't come 
with their label on. You'd be surprised. Some do, but others don't. So I always make it a general rule that um, when you buy thread, label it as soon as you get it. Otherwise, you may forget what size it is. Because I certainly can't tell just by looking whether it's a 20 or a 30 because it looks so similar. So label your thread as you buy it. So one important point about spools for industrial machines, unlike a domestic machine, the thread on an industrial spool is wound so that it unwinds from the top, like so. You see how that's nicely unwinding? Whereas on a domestic machine, the thread pulls out from the side, like so. So that's an important point to remember. So a sewing machine actually uses two threads, what's called the top thread and the bottom or bobbin thread. Usually you put the same thread in the top as the bottom, but you can use different colours, top and bottom, if that's what you want. But generally always use the same thickness for both, otherwise you may cause problems with your tension. I'll cover the threading of the machine soon, but quickly talk about needles. Needles can be as confusing as thread sizes, but again, check out my free PDF to tell you which needle to use with which thread size. So don't panic. Um, this is what a machine needle looks like. As it has a thicker shank, a shoulder, and the main body of the needle is called the blade. And the blade has a narrow groove which runs down one side. Um, then we have the eye and the needle and the tip. The tip is available in different shapes. For, for example, stitching leather, we use a tip which cuts the hole in the leather, unlike a regular fabric needle which spreads the weave apart. So when buying needles for your machine, there are two important pieces of information you need. Um, different classes of machine have what's called a needle system. A needle system is a classification of the type of needles that the machine will accommodate. So this can be found in your machine's manual or ask the dealer where you bought it from. It's usually represented by a number separated by an X like this. So the second thing you need to understand is the size of the needle. Again, there are many different sizing systems for needles depending on where you are in the world. But check out my pre free PDF which simplifies it all for you. Um, needles are generally sized by the thickness of the blade. So in the UK, the most common sizing system is the NM, which stands for number metric. This gives the diameter of the needle's blade in hundredths of a millimetre. So an NM130 uh, needle has a diameter of 1.3 millimetres. I know this sounds complicated, but it's not. Just look at the NM number and move the decimal point. To the left two times and that tells you the actual size in millimeters. So let's look at some different manufacturers needle packs and you'll see what I mean. So this is the Schmetz brand, a very popular maker around the world. Um, you can see here that the machine's needle system and the needle size in NM. Just to make it even more complicated some manufacturers use their own entirely different sizing system. For example Singer use two digit numbers for their sizes. So let's look at another needle manufacturer's pack. This is an organ pack and as you can see the size is at the bottom. The 110 is the NM size which is 1.1 millimeters but the 18 is the Singer size. Here's another example of a Grotz Becker brand. Um, the layout's different but all the same information is there. We see the needle system and the NM size and the Singer size. Okay, that's all the technical stuff out of the way. Um, we'll start off by installing the needle. So the needle holder has a little screw just here. So we need to insert the needle, making sure that the groove is on the left hand side. Just push it in, slide it up until it stops. and then tighten down that small screw. There we go. 
Now, you might be tempted to go ahead and start threading the machine, but before you do that, you need to make sure you fill the bobbin with some thread first. If you do the top thread first and then the bottom thread, you'll soon realise that you're going to have to unthread the entire machine in order to get some thread for the bottom bobbin. It'll all make sense in a moment. So before we do that, we first need to load the bobbin with some thread. Remove the end cap of the cylinder arm. It just slides off. And you'll see sitting in there the bobbin holder. Just lift up the little lever and pull the whole thing out. Then take the end of your thread, making sure it's going through the top thread guide, and bring it down and thread it through this little hole. Wrap it around the tension disc and bring it along to the empty bobbin. Then thread the thread from the inside of the bobbin to the outside through one of the holes on the bobbin side, like this, and leave about a few inches. Push the lever on the back of the bobbin winder until the wheel engages with the drive belt. Hold onto the thread hanging out of the side of the bobbin and set the speed of the machine higher than normal and gently press the pedal to turn the motor. The bobbin will fill with thread and it will automatically stop when it's full. Okay, so we now have a full bobbin of thread. Um, if you look on the bench cam, if you check your owner's manual, it'll give you the direction that the thread should be inserted into the, the bobbin holder. On this particular machine, the thread needs to be on the right side when you insert it into the bobbin holder. So just pop the bobbin into the holder like so, so that the thread is on the right side. When you pull it, the bobbin turns clockwise. Now, on the side of the bobbin case, there's a little slot, a groove. If you bring your thread round till you find that little um, slot, and then pull the thread down the slot, like so, and along until it just clips underneath this little tension spring here. That's what gives the bottom bobbin its tension. So you should be able to pull on that and there's a little bit of tension on the thread. So just to recap, the thread comes through the small gap, the slit in the side of the bobbin case, and then it's pulled under a little spring which applies tension. Carefully put the bobbin holder back into the machine. There's a little notch that aligns with a slot on the holder. Just push it in, you'll feel a click. Before we thread the top thread, make sure the presser foot is in the up position by lifting the lever on the back. And the take-up lever is at its highest point by turning the balance wheel on the side. Then we thread the end of the thread through the thread pin guide. Feed the thread from the back into the top hole and then again from the back through the bottom hole forming a candy cane look. Then the thread goes down the right hole in here and again down the left hole missing out the middle hole. Again, it should look like a candy cane. We then take the thread over to the tensioning section. You see this little pigtail loop? Just wrap the thread under this and then tension the thread between your fingers and pull it down around the top tensioning discs. Make sure the thread is between the two discs and not behind them. You should feel some tension on the thread as you pull it between the discs. Wrap the thread over this post and slide it back until it lines up with a gap between the discs. Follow around to the left and apply a little bit of tension with your other hand on the, the end of the thread. Push the thread up the groove and back a little until the thread is caught on the spring loop. Go 
continue with the thread and slip it under this thread guide. Push the end of the thread through the hole on the take-up lever and bring it back through the thread guide. Then follow down and thread it through the second guide and down further through the third guide. We're almost there. The final step is to thread the thread through the small hole at the top of the needle holder. Then thread the needle from left to right. If you have problems threading the needle, you can use a needle threading tool or trim the end of the thread as this makes it easier to get it through the hole. Pull the thread away from the needle about four inches. We need to bring the bottom thread up through the bottom plate of the machine so that both threads are on the surface. Tuck your top thread under the foot of the machine and hold it to the right, like this. Then turn the balance wheel towards you. You'll see the needle go down and then come back up again. Repeat this until the bottom thread is pulled up through the small hole. Use something to pull out the bottom thread and then pull about four inches from the bobbin. Okay, so before I show you what the stitch looks like, I'll quickly describe how the sewing machine creates the stitch. Um, when the needle comes down, it penetrates the material and pulls the top thread down below the surface of the other side. It then hooks the bottom thread from the bobbin and pulls the bottom thread up locking the two stitches together. This is why it's called a lock stitch. So I've put a yellow thread in the top and a red thread in the bottom just to make it easier for you to see the different threads. I'm going to use some dark leather so it should be quite clear. Um, I'm going to cover different stitches and sewing techniques in the next part so I won't go into much detail about stitching at the moment. So I'll place two pieces of leather together um, under the needle and lower the presser foot. So tension both of your thread ends and pull them towards the back of the machine. Place your leather under the presser foot and lower the foot. Now I'm not going to bother with back stitching at this stage. This is just to show you what the stitch looks like. So we'll start the stitch. So you always hold on to your two tail ends when you start sewing just to stop them getting tangled up at the beginning of the stitch. So I'll go slow. So this is the machine set at its uh, slowest setting. I can stitch it one stitch at a time, like so, just by tapping on the pedal. But I'll finish off this row and we'll have a look at the stitching. You can go slightly faster and slow right down. So come to the end, I'm just going to lift up the needle with the automatic needle lifter on this particular machine and then raise the presser foot. So we pull out the work and to snip off your tail ends, leaving a few inches. Let's trim off those as well. So there we have our first stitch. Now isn't that beautiful? It's not straight, it doesn't matter, it's just to demonstrate the process of stitching. So we have the yellow thread on the top and on the back we have the red, red thread. Now you can see that this is actually a very well formed stitch. If you look closely, I'm going to have to leave it there to focus, you can tell it's a well-formed stitch when the holes are clearly visible separating each section of the stitch and the stitches are even widths apart. So that's a good stitch. That's a size 6 on the dial. Generally when you're using heavier materials like leather, canvas and so on, the, you need to use a wider stitch. So what do we do if your stitches don't look perfect like these? If your top 
or bottom stitch looks wrong, by that I mean the spacing doesn't look right or it looks like one continuous stitch or there's a tangled mess on the back, that means there's a problem with your tension. Now tension can cause some people a lot of tension, forgive the pun, but it's really quite simple to put right. The machine has two places where you can adjust the tension. The top thread tension is adjusted here. The bottom thread's tension is adjusted on the bobbin holder. As a general rule of thumb, I'd say leave the bobbin tension alone and try and correct the problem with the top tension thread adjuster. Um, so what is thread tension? Tension is the process the machine uses to keep the thread taut during the sewing process. If there was no tension on each thread, they just create a tangled mess of loose thread, commonly called a rat's nest. So when the top and bottom threads have equal tension, the locking part of the stitch will meet in the middle of the two pieces of material being stitched together. If you can see the bottom thread on the top of the material and the holes don't look clear. This means your top tension is too tight, so you need to reduce the top tension. If you can see the top thread on the bottom, the top tension is too loose, so tighten the top tension. So what we are doing with tension adjustment is we're trying to get the lock part of the stitch to meet in the middle, so it's hidden on both sides of the material. If you have problems seeing it because the bot top and bottom thread are the same colour, try putting a different colour thread in the bottom bobbin so it stands out, like I've done intentionally here, while trying to get the tension just right. Then, once the tension's right, stick the same colour thread back in the machine. Um, the best way to demonstrate this is to show you some examples. I've put a red thread in the bottom bobbin, just so you can see the problem more clearly. So let's look at this top tensioning system. I know it looks a bit scary, but it isn't. Get used to playing around with it and you'll overcome the apprehension you might have about adjusting it. You can't break your machine by playing around with a dial. To give yourself some reference point, I suggest you put a small mark on the knob at the 12 o'clock position. I've just put a dot on mine with a permanent marker. This helps you to count the number of times you've turned the dial. So at this point, there's no way of telling where the tension is set, as there's no number to tell me. I have to use my dot to tell me. I'm going to unscrew the knob anti-clockwise and count how many times the knob does a full revolution before it comes off the end of the screw. When the knob reaches the end of the shaft, the spring will push it off. Don't panic. Make a note of the number of turns it took. Mine took six turns, so I now know that the top tension was set at six turns from zero. Put the knob back on, making sure the dot is at the 12 o'clock position and turn it six times to get it back to the original position it was at. So we now know the current tension is set at six turns from zero. If we need to loosen the tension, we need to turn the knob anti-clockwise by one full turn. To increase the tension, we need to turn the knob clockwise by one full turn. If you keep a note on a piece of paper where you are, you can adjust the tension perfectly in either direction by a full turn, a half turn, or just a bit to get it perfect. So, I'll do another stitch and let's see how it looks. So, here's a close-up of that stitch. There's two obvious things here. One, it looks like a continuous line of thread. There's no real separation between each stitch. And that's been caused because the, the red thread, that's the bobbin thread, is being pulled up. So, the tension on the top tensioner is too tight. So, we need to loosen the tension on the top knob and that'll pull these bottom threads down which will make the holes much more clearly defined and the stitches separated properly 
So we'll do that and see how it looks. So I just need to loosen the tension by, I would say, two turns. We'll try it with two turns. So two to the left. One. And two. Let's try that. So just run this material through again. And let's see what we get. And trim those off. As you can see, we're back to a perfect stitch. So there's no longer any red thread on the top surface. We've got nice, clearly defined stitches and clearly defined holes. So that's how you correct tension if you're seeing the bottom thread on the top. The other way around, if you were to see yellow thread on the bottom, for example, you just do the opposite. So the rule of thumb is if you see the bottom thread showing on the top surface you loosen the top tension. If you see the top thread showing on the bottom surface you tighten the top tension. So as you can see it's a bit of a balancing act. You need to add or remove tension little by little until you get it just right. Okay, that's it for this part. In the next and final part, I'm going to cover some basic stitching techniques and show you some different ways to join leather together. So, if you haven't already done so, please don't forget to check out geordieleather.com's website. It has the biggest range of tools, materials, patterns, equipment and all sorts for the leather worker on the internet. If you'd like to support the channel, please check out the support section in the description below this video. And finally, um, if you like my machine and you'd like to get one yourself, the same model, um, please use the link in the description below. That way the channel gets a small affiliate commission which helps the channel to keep going. Thanks again for your support and don't forget to leave me a like and let me know your thoughts about this or any of my other videos in the comments section. So until next time, take care, stay safe and bye for now.